lecture on executive compensation, but it's, it's a little bit more than that. Um, so we've talked about uh, the financialization of the economy, about how uh, the tax code, the crony capitalist, political capitalist tax code allows the write-off of debt on the tax code and taxes equity twice. So what happens is you get uh, the, mar the European Marxists call this managerial capitalism because the percentage of debt is so is so so much greater than the equity that the that the and we learn this from regulatory capture in the financial markets also that the equity holder or the investor doesn't have the incentive the self interest to monitor what's going on. Uh, under the financial markets, that's the SEC. So the people got ripped off by Bernie Madoff because they were lulled to sleep by the paternalistic regulatory state, welfare state, instead of looking out for their own best interest. So what the neo-Marxists say is that the, the managerial class within the firm, because the debt level is so much higher than the equity uh, levels, is that uh, the managerial class is running amok and needs to be regulated and you need to put a salary cap on executive compensation. And so, uh, and this is from our textbook, uh, who says that there's three, three market forces, disciplinary forces through the market, which prevents this managerial capitalism from happening. But the one thing I wanted to say is uh, last year, there's this group called the Conference Board. And uh, the Conference Board is a, a, a not-for-profit organization, in, uh, industry organization of uh, the leaders of the top 500 firms uh, are members of this Conference Board. And prior to last year, it was all about creating shareholder value. And this, this comes from Milton Friedman's Capitalism and Freedom, if you ever have a chance to read that, about as long as there's an incentive to create shareholder value, in, in other words, return on equity, then uh, consumer sovereignty will be maximized as well as economic well-being. But last year, the conference board, now it's called a stakeholder capitalism, where you're not just creating returns on equity for the shareholders, but you also have other stakeholders, which is the local community, the environment, things like that. Um, so this whole idea of capitalism in the financial markets being about creating growth on equity or returns on equity has all changed either viscerally or uh, de jure, de facto, but the proclaimed change is now, it's not just about shareholder return on value, but stakeholders. So now, now you're getting into the knowledge question of who is a stakeholder? <laughs> How is that decided? Like, uh, you, 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 you see, uh, what's the country in Latin America that's rewriting their constitution? Or, uh, so you get or um, discrimination in college entrance uh, policies, uh, positive lawmaking. So once you once you get away from just returns on equity, which are easily easily measurable and auditable, and then you start getting stakeholder capitalism, it's a different, it's more of a political political world. And so, so what you have so here's the managers and executives within the firm, the managers and executives know more about the firm than the shareholders, of course. So, and the managers and executives know more than the board of directors. So in order to reduce uh, managerial capitalism or rent seeking due to asymmetrical information, uh, you, you get a board of directors created, some of which are 
the senior executives of the firm, and then you also have outside directors. And this is when you start to get the political capitalism is who is the outside directors? How are they chosen? Who decides? And then the whole idea then is, and then here, this is a wage labor market. So the, the idea is under asymmetrical information, you have a principal agent problem. Uh, asymmetrical information. So the principals are the shareholders or were the shareholders until last year. Now it's the stakeholders uh, are represented by the agent, which is uh, the, man, the, the board of directors. So you have the inside board of directors and then outside board of directors watching, reducing the asymmetrical information, looking out for the best interest of the shareholders because the shareholders are many and unorganized. So the idea is to create incentive compatibility to where everyone's incentives are aligned. And when, but when you start having uh, mandated stakeholders, well then it's very hard to align interests because everyone's interests are unique. That's just a personal observation. So the, the problem is when you start to have non-financial measurable uh, uh, metrics, then you start to run into the, the, the commons tragedy where no one has any residuals. The under uh, financial capitalism, not political capitalism, the residuals are the profit of the firm. But, and, but now what, what are the residuals and who, who is entitled to what? And how do you, how do you make uh, align incentives? And at the time I was, so this says fiscal commons tragedy. That, that's related to the, the debt over equity issue and the financialization of the economy. Uh, ideally, <clears throat> you'd pay all your taxes on April 14th, on April 15th, and then vote on April 16th. But the, 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 the uh, fiscal commons tragedy is that there's so many taxes from coming so many different places that you don't really see the big picture. So that's why the state continues to grow larger as well as does debt continue to grow larger. The debt to equity problem. So the idea is to align incentives. So uh, the internal discipline, meaning within the firm board of directors relationship, uh, where the board keeps the managers in line. So obviously incentive compatibility for, for employees is profit sharing and uh, creating a good work environment. Uh, allowing flexible scheduling or whatever creates a good work environment. And then, uh, so then the, you have labor market discipline. So the managers and executives of firms are uh, highly compensated and they take a lot of, uh, work a lot of hours and have a lot of responsibility. And uh, so they, they, they can't abuse their uh, uh, information advantage too much because then they would get a bad reputation and wouldn't be rehirable. So uh, the, you have a labor market discipline to where uh, managers and executives with uh, superior knowledge have to act not only in their own best interest, but also in others' best interest due to the labor market discipline. Then you also, and this is the most important one, which is the capital markets discipline, which is if you don't make a profit, the firm will be taken over or gone or go bankrupt. And therefore then the manager and executive would lose their their, their work. So that if you read Milton Friedman's Capitalism and Freedom, he talks quite a bit about the, the self-regulating 
self-regulation of the market. And like I said, because now instead of being, you no longer have the cap, capital market discipline as strong as it once was because you now have more political capitalism with stakeholders instead of the profit motive.